Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. My love affair with cowboy style guns started with cap and ball revolvers, or rather reproductions of cap and ball revolvers. That began when I was still in the Army station of Fort Riley, Kansas. <clears throat> and I accumulated several, including one of Colt's reissue um, pocket navies. And in the fullness of time, after I got out of the army, I got sick of dealing with black powder and the associated mess and moved on to other things. But I always loved the cowboy style guns and had a number of reproductions of single action armies over the years. And in the fullness of time, once again, circumstances conspired to forced me to get rid of them. In this tie case, it wasn't a choice. It, I was forced to get rid of them by our finances, um, including a USFA four and five eighths inch that is now worth a fortune. You win some, you lose some. But after I got rid of them, and in no small part because I couldn't afford to shoot them, Linda bought me another gun for Christmas. And this was a Cimarron Richards Mason revolver, which was a reproduction of a Colt 1851 Navy that Colt produced and shipped from the factory with a cylinder and so uh, with a cartridge conversion in 38 Colt. And the new reproduction was in 38 Special. And this meant I could afford to shoot it because I didn't reload yet at that point and 45, or 45 Colt had gotten prohibitively expensive. So, I kept that around for a lot of years. I very much enjoyed shooting it, but I had an itch. I like snubbies. And I had an itch to do a Avenging Angel style revolver based on the Richards Mason revolver. And finally, Linda said, just do it. And I did. And this was the result. On one of my first major efforts at gunsmithing. And um, I cut the butt, made it into a bird's head profile by soldering in another, another piece of metal of the appropriate shape. Made these, um, some sort of rosewood, I don't recall exactly what. Uh, grips for it, very nice, and cut the barrel in the form of an avenging angel. So, let's go to the tabletop and have a look. So the first step was simply removing the ejector shroud and rod. Very easy, just a screw. And then cutting the barrel to two inches and putting a light crown on it was interested to see that the original barrel did not have a crown at all at the muzzle as it came from Cimarron. But uh, I crowned it and I installed a little piece of rod as a front sight. And I gotta say, it does shoot quite high at seven yards. It pretty much on at 25 yards, but I don't, I don't really shoot this at 25 yards. Um, Loading is accomplished as you would expect. Bring the gun to half cock and just rotate the cylinders and fill them with bullets. Well, cartridges, if you want to be technical. And since the uh, hammer can theoretically strike a cartridge hard enough to detonate it if the gun is dropped, you should probably load five rounds. I load six because I rest the firing pin on the hammer between the rims of the cartridges, and that's actually proven to be quite adequate in actual use. Um, one thing I did do, since I deleted the ejector, is I cut these lovely little notches here, so you can hook in a fingernail and pull the cartridge out. And, um, if the gun is not excessively dirty with standard pressure loads of draw shooting this, that works just fine. And um, again, this is the factory conversion that is a reproduction of the Richards Mason's conversion produced by Colt. 
Now, to disassemble it, it's very simple. The screw, as you can see, has a flat spot on one side. And if you take a screwdriver and rotate it so that the flat spot is down, the wedge comes right out. You can pull the cylinder off and the barrel, and there you have it. And um, in this iteration, the uh, breech is screwed to the blast shield permanently and is non-removable, but then you don't really need to. When this gun was made, Uberti was the one making these for Cimarron, and it's quite well made and a very nice gun. I can't speak to the later guns, which may or may not have been by Pieta. Uh, my information on that varies. Now, this is a purely modern feature. Um, I have never found photos of a Colt that had had the butt rounded off in period. Um, apparently, they just didn't consider it that big a deal. But I like it. I like the look. And it lends a certain uniqueness to the gun. And I enjoy guns being unique. So, simple gun. Pretty simple work on it to convert it. And um, it's a lot of fun. And I, I shoot it fairly, excuse me, fairly regularly. And, you know, just for fun. But, very pleased with the results. So, this gun is handy. It's fun. And I really enjoy it both as a shooting, both shooting it and as a conversation piece. I am going to replace that little stubby front sight with one that is more appropriately registered to 7 to 10 yards because, you know, that's what I'm likely to shoot it at more often. And um, this sparked my belief that I could do gunsmithing because <laughs> I hadn't I've always previously been pretty dubious about it. It also um, is the gun that started my interest in cartridge conversion revolvers. We have smoke. That's never good. Um, and, of course, after getting this gun, I researched them intensively, and that led to me buying cursed conversion cylinders and then eventually making my own. And you're going to see more of the, more of the fruits of that passion as time goes by. So, great gun, good conversation piece, just good fun. If you like the video, please hit like and subscribe. It's the only way YouTube knows I exist. And um, leaving a comment also helps. Helpful comments are especially helpful to me and my sanity. And if you want to support me in a more material fashion, there is a link to my Patreon account in the description below kick a buck or two my way each month and it all adds up and helps rather a lot. So I hope this finds you well, stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again soon.